In this video, we go hands-on with the Samsung T7 Touch portable SSD with an integrated solid state fingerprint reader. Check it out. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. All right, folks, here it is, the T7 Touch portable SSD from Samsung. Now, everyone knows Samsung T-Series SSDs. They are pretty much legendary at this point for being small and portable, being fast, and just being an overall good value. So does the T7 live up to the high standards set by its forebears like the T5 and the T3? And what I found is that yes, for the most part, the T7 Touch does live up to the standards set by its predecessors. We're gonna talk all about it. We're gonna first of all unbox it, see how it compares in size to its direct predecessor, the Samsung T5. We're gonna run some speed tests, and of course, yes, we're gonna talk about that fingerprint sensor as well. So here is the Samsung T7 Touch. So let's go ahead and remove the unit from the packaging and see what lies beneath. All right, so you have, it looks like a couple of USB cables and a getting started guide perhaps. Yes, that's what it is. So that's pretty boring. We're just gonna set that aside. Let's see what else is inside the box. So you have a USB-C to A cable and a USB-C to C cable. I don't presume that many Mac users will be taking advantage of this right here. Uh, this is for legacy USB-A connections. Most of you guys are probably gonna be using this right here, the USB-C to USB-C cable. It's a very short cable. It's also kind of stiff, not a huge fan of it, but it's probably gonna hold up pretty well over time. And this cable is about, about 15 inches or so in length, by the way. All right, so here is the Samsung T7 Touch, portable SSD. It has the USB Type-C port. It looks very similar to the Samsung T5, but there are some noticeable differences as well. First and foremost, it is a little bit wider than the Samsung T5, not by a lot, but I'd say about 10 millimeters or so. Samsung says it has the length and width profile of a credit card, and I'd say that is right on the money. As you can see, the Apple card almost perfectly matches the form factor, at least from a length and width perspective. So here is the T5 on the right versus the T7 Touch on the left. You can see that the T7 Touch is wider. Not only is it wider, it's also thinner, not as thick as the T5. And that's illustrated really well right here. You can see the T5 on the bottom noticeably thicker than the T7 Touch. So let's compare the T5 to the Apple Card. And you can see right there, I mean, it's no question that the T7 is a little bit longer than the T5. But despite these changes, both of these devices are still ridiculously small. Both will easily fit in a pants pocket and you probably won't even notice that they're in there. Okay, so before we can get started with using the fingerprint sensor, we have to go ahead and install the Samsung portable SSD software. And that's what I'm doing right now. So Samsung has this software right on the drive for your convenience. And of course you can go out to the web and download it as well. So here's what you see when you boot back up and launch the utility for the Samsung portable SSD. And once you plug in your drive, you'll see the welcome screen there. You can name your SSD and you can set the security mode. So right now security mode is off. You can secure with just a password or secure with a password and a fingerprint. So I'm gonna click begin setup here. Keep in mind that you must establish a password before you can use the fingerprint sensor. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Confirm my password as well. All right, so click next and there we go. So now it's time to scan our fingerprint. And guess what? If you've ever used Touch ID on the iPhone or iPad, you're gonna know exactly what to do here. You simply touch the fingerprint sensor multiple times at different angles. And as you do, you'll see the percentage increase on the utility. There you go. So eventually you'll get to 100% and you'll be good to go. Okay, just a couple more taps and we're done. So now you can either click done to finish or click add to add additional fingerprints. And these prints can be from the same person or it can be from multiple individuals that you wanna share the drive with. So whenever you wanna edit any security settings, you're gonna to have to put in your password and confirm. And once you do, that will allow you to go in, for instance, and delete fingerprints or rename fingerprints, disable fingerprint security, change your password, etc. 
So you're probably wondering, what happens if I plug the Samsung T7 Touch into a Mac or a PC or a game console or any other computing device and I don't have the Samsung software installed? Well, you'll see something that looks like this. It's gonna actually present to you the installers to install the utility and it's gonna say, hey, this is a read-only partition. You're not gonna be able to see what files are on the drive or add any files to the drive until you authenticate with your fingerprint like that. Indeed, the T7 Touch lets you authenticate with your fingerprint directly from the device itself. No additional apps required. And that answers my biggest question about this device because I was wondering what happens if you plug it into a PS4 or into an iPad Pro? Well, just like it did on the Mac, before you authenticate, it's gonna say, hey, this drive is read only. Only after you authenticate with a valid fingerprint will it allow you to access the contents of the drive and add new files to the drive. So here I just authenticated and now I can access all the drive's contents right there from my iPad Pro. And I was skeptical at first, but that's actually really handy to have, especially if you travel, you don't have to worry about what happens if I lose my device? Will everyone have all my data, all my important files? No, it's secured using your fingerprint. Now here's another thing about the T7. It uses USB 3.2 Gen 2 for 10 gigabits per second connectivity, but the real story is that the T7 uses embedded NVMe flash. So unlike its predecessor, the T5, it's able to put more of that precious bandwidth to good use. As you can see right here, the drive's rated at 1050 megabytes per second read, and as you can see, it comes pretty close. Now let's compare the benchmarks from the T7 Touch to the T5. Here's the T5 and you're gonna notice that despite having the same 10 gigabits per second bandwidth available to it, it's a lot slower because the actual flash storage components inside the T5 are a lot slower. So really the big deal here with the T7 Touch besides the fingerprint sensor is the use of PCIe NVMe flash. And that may be a reason you would consider upgrading. Now, that all being said, you'll need to temper your expectations when performing sustained file transfers with large amounts of data. And that's because this drive, as you can tell, is extremely tiny. I mean, it's a little bit wider than the T5, but it's also thinner than the T5. And these flash storage modules, especially when under sustained load, get very hot. And of course, this device, being as small as it is, has no active cooling. There are no fans inside, for instance. So to deal with the heat experience with very large file transfers, it has to throttle down. And that's when you'll start to notice that it takes a little bit longer than you may have expected to transfer those really large files. So for example, if you're transferring a really small file like 5, 10, 20, even 50 gigabytes, the T7 Touch is really fast. It's faster than the T5. But you may notice that after some time with the sustained file transfer, that the performance begins to take a dip. And that's just the reality of working with these really fast and really tiny form factor SSDs. Throttling is actually a good thing in some respects because you know your drive isn't going to fail because of overheating. So if you really need that extra speed, go with something a little larger, maybe like the Samsung X5. The 500 gigabyte version of the X5 doesn't cost all that much more than the T7, which starts at $130. The T7 Touch comes in 500 gigabyte, one terabyte and two terabyte varieties and launches today. Samsung plans to launch a regular T7 without the fingerprint sensor later on this year. So ladies and gentlemen, what do you think about the T7 Touch? Do you plan on buying one? Do you like the idea of having that embedded fingerprint sensor? Let me know down below in the comment section and be sure to hit that subscribe button for more videos like this. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.